last time, but we didn't finish it. We have to uh, do one, just one more thing. Hmm? That is, uh, that's in fact a piece of cake that is, uh, factorizing uh, trinomials. This is easy. You have learned it from you in your grade nine. Hmm? But uh, the problem is this. Uh, in the paper, in your oral paper, you get very simple trinomials. Because of that, since uh, uh, much algebra is not demanded in those papers, uh, even when somebody teaches you, uh, they usually, te I mean, he or she usually, te I mean, takes simple examples. So when the numbers becomes a little larger, you may find it a little difficult. That's why I, I uh, experienced with the single William class. Uh, like, so let's have something like this. Huh? But some people did well. But wait, huh? wait a minute. We'll uh, first. I'll just do a couple of them. Then I'll let you do the rest. It's a simpler one. Right. I'll do just a couple of them. Huh? Uh, we'll take the first one. Uh, there are several ways of doing this. Uh, if you are really uh, good at factoring, you can, I mean, you can write this in one line. But sometimes uh, you might come up with the uh, I mean, with some, I mean, you may make some mistakes if you try to do it in one line. Hmm? That's the only risk. So if you multiply these two, this is how you have to do it. You first multiply these two. I mean, I'll do the uh, slowest way first. Then you can probably speed the things up. I'll take these two. Hmm? Uh, 12 times minus 7. It is 84 numerically, but since there's one minus sign, it is minus 84. 
Hmm? Now you have to write this number as a product of two numbers so that their sum is 25. Hmm? You know that to get minus 84, at least one of them should be minus. No, exactly one of them is minus, not at least, exactly. So we'll, if you go the uh, smallest number, like when one is there, one times 84, uh, since the sum is positive, right? There are two conditions that you need to meet, meet right? One is that uh, product should be negative. I mean, we need this concept later in a different way, right? That's why I wanted to explain it from the, I mean, right from the beginning. So, like, if you take this one, uh, like, one number should be negative. Uh, and on the other hand, the sum, I mean, the sum of these two numbers should be 25. It is a positive number. To get a positive number, while one number is negative, the numerical smaller number should be made negative. So it should be like minus 1 times 84. But it's far away, like, you get 83. If you add them up, you get minus 83. But you need 25. So 2 times 42, that doesn't work. It doesn't add up to 25. So we'll go for 3 times 28. This smaller number is minus. Now you can see that sum of these two is 25. So you break this up. Minus 3x plus 28x. Now, you can factor them as pairs. Here, 3x is common. From numbers, you get 3. From variables, you get x. So you get 4x here. The product of these two make it 12x squared. Now, here, the sign is negative. This is negative. This should be 1. From these two, you get 7 as the common factor. But you have to copy this down. I saw some people uh, omit this sign. No, you have to keep it there. Hmm? If it is negative, you have to write the negative sign. Now, uh, 7 is common. So you get 4x minus 1. You need to have the same factor in both places. When you pull it out, you get 3x plus 7. Hmm? Uh, you can do the rest. I'll do this one. X to the power 4. Hmm? Oh, it's simple, right? I'll do this. No, this one. Problem number 7. Uh, 8 x to the power 4. Minus 18 x squared minus 5. Okay. Again, you can see that instead of x, now the variable is x squared. You have the square of x squared here. So it doesn't matter. You can simply uh, follow the same procedure. You multiply these two, you get minus 40. You can start from the from 1 times 40, because just to figure out that you need a minus sign here, minus number here. That means this, these two numbers should add up to minus 18. That means larger number should be negative. Hmm? But 1 times minus 40 doesn't do, the, uh, do it for this problem. So you have to go for next one. 2 times 20, then 4 times 10, 5 times 8. But 2 times 20 will uh, do it for you. Look, minus 20, sorry, other way around, uh, 2 times minus 20. So you can write this as 2x squared minus 20x squared minus 5. So you get, you have to find, I mean, figure out the common factor. From numbers, you get 4. From variables, you get x squared. So you will be left with 2x squared plus, oh, sorry, this row. This should be 2. Huh? From these two, you get 2. So here you get 4. From this, you get 1. Again, here, you have to copy this minus sign down. Now, you have 5 in common. You get 4x squared. Uh, here, you need to have my negative sign. Therefore, since you have already pulled out a negative sign, this should be plus 1. Hmm? Now, you can see that there's a common factor. So, you have 4x squared plus 1. 
and you get 2x squared minus 5. Right? Uh, you can do the rest. Hmm. I'll give the answers towards the end, but you do them. If you make common mistake, then I'll uh, correct. I mean, I'll do it for you. But if you uh, if you can do it in one line, you can do it. But if you make mistakes, there's no use. Then slower method would be better.
The answers are reasonably good, but I, uh, most of you made this, not most of you, some of you made this mistake. Uh, you have, most of you have dropped the sign here. I told you, I, if you don't put it, it's wrong, because look, uh, you will get this as the answer. 3x, if you don't put this plus sign, it is a product of four numbers, like 3x times 4x minus 1 times 7 times this. So you don't have to factor it anymore. Okay? So you need to have plus sign there, uh, or minus sign, whatever. Whatever you get, you have to write it. Uh, what else? Uh, I expect you to make mistakes here. Most of you made that mistake. Uh, again, this problem is also a similar one, where you tend to make mistakes because you think that the number, the combination you get is correct. I mean, even though the, I mean, sometimes you get a combination like here you can get 21 times 4, still 84, but one number should be negative. So there you might make a mistake. Even this problem is like that. Uh, some of you made mistakes there. Uh, the Problem number nine. I'll, I'll write the answers first. Hmm? I did one and seven. Uh, yes, one and no, one and seven is uh, the answer to this is. Six. These are the answers. Mm. I did seven. You guys made mistakes there. You know, one times six is six. If you multiply these two numbers, you get six. Now you may write this as six times minus one, right? But here the the problem, the mistake you make is the following: uh, one times six is six, so the sum is minus five. Therefore, you have to write this number uh, so that. Uh, Sorry, you have to write 6 as a product of two numbers so that their sum is negative. Since the product is positive, both numbers should be negative, like minus 1 times minus 6 or minus 2 times minus 3. Minus 2 times minus 3 will add up to minus 5. But most of you have taken minus 6 and plus 1, which is wrong because it doesn't give you 6. So here you have to break this as minus 2 it's, it's a cakewalk after this, I mean, the numbers are very small. But since there's another combination you have, which, like, you might make that mistake because six times minus one will give you, sorry, minus six times plus one will give you plus five, sorry, minus five as the sum. And also, value is six, if the product, the numerical value is six, but there's an error in the sign, if you take it. But if you do it right, you might uh, figure out the mistake in the third line. Third line, you don't get the same factor twice if you do if you do it with uh, minus six and plus one, but still you have made the mistake. So here x squared is common. You get x squared minus two. Here minus. You have to write that sign. 
3 is common, x squared minus 2. So when you pull out x squared minus 2, you get this. Right? Uh, then there are two more, uh, three more. I'll write the, write the answers here. for the ninth, for the ninth you get, uh, I did ninth, I had to write the tenth, this one. common. So I don't think we have. I think none of you, of you got the correct answer. When I was uh, correcting you, I mean, answers, I think uh, I also made a mistake. There are two is common. So you get something like this. Mm. First you get two as a common factor. something like that. And nobody has got this answer, I think. Nobody has pulled out two. I told you, in factoring, the cardinal rule is that you have to pull out two, the common factor first. Two is common. I didn't see, see that answer in any of those scripts. Eleven. Those are the answers to 10 and the 11th. In 10, there's a common factor. You have to pull it out. Hmm? Otherwise, you cannot completely factor that, pro that uh, expression. Okay. Now, I'll tell you how to factor them in one line. Hmm? You can factor them in one line. That's how I got the answers. Uh, you can factor them in one line. Your you answers are reasonably good, no? uh, even though you made, a mis made mistakes here uh, and in the ninth problem here. Uh, generally, your answers are good. Hmm? And uh, I don't like that error. I mean, there you cannot, make, uh, cannot uh, ignore the sign. Then it's completely wrong. I expect you to do, I mean, make this mistake. That's OK. It doesn't mean that you don't know the subject. It, 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 you tend to, I mean, you tend to make a mistake in this case. If I give you this, the first, very first problem, again, there's a, the same pattern there. You might make a mistake there. But that's reasonable. Those are human errors. But uh, dropping this sign is, uh, it's a kind of calamity. You cannot make that mistake. It's wrong. Huh? Because it, then it's completely wrong. Because there you get a product of four numbers. But I saw four, four of you, at least, uh, have done that mistake. Uh, now I'll tell you how to write, how to do them in one line. If possible, you do it. Huh? Otherwise, you do it in this way. At least with, in this way, you get the correct answer. The steps are really good. I mean, that's what, I, that's what we are doing these days. Sometimes uh, you might feel like we are doing very slowly. No. In fact, we are, we, are, we are making an investment here. Because you know, uh, if you are well prepared, when we start the lesson, then we can go really fast. Really fast means like this. Say, for example, uh, I ask you to do one problem uh, like, like similar to past paper question. I mean, not the same question, but uh, a question which is in the level of a past paper question. Or a question what we are going to get in your exam, something like that. Hmm? 
if you do it, say for example, all of you uh, can do it without any difficulty, then we can do another problem. If again, you will do it uh, correctly, then we can do another one. Say for example, if half of you don't get the answer correctly, because we have made several mistakes, then I have to do it again. So therefore, uh, the time we spend on that particular problem will be doubled. Because you, you can probably do it in uh, probably, say, 10 minutes. When I do it on the board, I have to explain it, and I cannot write faster. Because, you know, in the board, if you use the chalkboard, it's very, you cannot write very fast. Therefore, I might take probably another 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So instead of 10 minutes, we probably spend 30 minutes. Even though you understand it, it's a waste of time. So if you, if you prepare this, the, I mean, probably you have different levels, right? Some people are very good. Uh, so probably some people have forgotten certain stuff. I don't see anybody who is weak in math. There's nobody like that here in the class. Hmm? However, uh, if we just get the things brushed up, then we can uh, go really fast. Fast means I don't have to pace, pace up. But when we just do a problem, all of you can do it. Right? The, 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 the forthcoming problem, I mean, chapters will be very easy. Once you, once you are really fluent in these things, uh, it's just a cakewalk. You can simply do it very, I mean, without any difficulty. Hmm? Sometimes, you know, some of you don't need this, I know. But if, if I just concentrate on them, right, uh, and if I start the lesson, the polynomials, then we, the class, the, our pace will get really slow. Because if half of you don't get the answer, I have to do it for you. If 95% of you get the answer and others also can get the answer, but they haven't got the answer because they have made a mistake, that's okay. They can do it later. They know what they are doing. Probably they may not get the answer because they have made a mistake. That's okay. They can do it after the, after, I mean, later after the class. They can finish it. But half of you cannot get the answer. Then I have to do it every time. But still I do it. Next time, again, if I give you the second problem, again you get stuck. Right? That's what happens. But if we, uh, if we go through this, we can, we can go really fast. I mean, fast means we, we don't have to waste our time. That's the reward we get if we invest the time on this for the time being. For the time being, we, sp we spend some time on this to get the things brushed up and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, you guys are good, but you know, uh, probably uh, these numbers are not, it seems like these, these problems are not very really difficult for you. Even though you have made some mistakes, I mean, you, I, I think your answers are good. Overall, your answers are good. Hmm? But this is a kind of an investment we do. Probably in one day we can do like uh, say, probably ten or twelve past five like questions, like examination type questions, uh, in a day if we invest time on this now. Otherwise, we may probably do five problems or four problems in a class. It's a waste of time, right? Uh, now, we'll do another set. Now, now I, I mean, we try to do it in one line, no matter how large the numbers are. You can do eight to nine problems.
They are rolled together eight. Right. So I'll tell you how to do them in one line. Here, what you do is we, you figure out one factor, just one factor, correctly. Then you can write the other factor straight away. Hmm? OK. Now, uh, you figure out one number. In the combination, you figure out one number. That would be sufficient. So 7 times minus 12 is minus 84. You can do it as a rough work. Huh? You don't have to uh, show that uh, those steps in the answer. You don't have to. So 7 times minus 12, minus 84. Now you have to write minus 84 as uh, uh, so that uh, the sum of the numbers is minus 25. How can you do it? And on, you can see that since the number is uh, negative, the larger number in the product should be negative. So you can take 1 times minus 84. That doesn't work, huh? because they add up to minus 83. Uh, 2 times minus 42, mm -hmm. that doesn't work. 3 times minus 28, that works, huh? 3 times minus 28. Mm -hmm. That means we have to break this into two parts. One is 3x, the other is minus 28x, right? Assume that you have bro broken this into two parts. One term is 3x, mm -hmm. 3x plus 3x. So assuming that you have plus 3x here, right? 7x squared, uh, like plus 3x adjacent to 7x squared, like this. What can you pull out? I mean, what's the common factor? You pull out x, you get 7x plus 3. You write that, 7x plus 3. Then what is the other factor? You can easily write, because you know you have 7x, the term you get here. You, no matter what it is, the product of those two will give you 7x squared. Since it is 7x, you need an x to make it 7x squared. Now, don't worry about this one. Take this minus 12. Three times that number will give you minus 12. Hmm? So what is that number? Three times what will give you minus 12? The number should be minus uh, three times four. Hmm? I'll do one of them. One, one more. Likewise, you can do it uh, in one line, but you need to figure out that the how you how no, you need to break the first. I mean, the number in the middle. Let's take two. I mean, since your answers are good, you can stick to that. But if you want, you can uh, do it in one line in this way. But if you tend to make mistakes in this way, don't stick to this method. You can do the way that you did the previous set of problems. But you may try it because you can do it real fast. Now take this one. 6 times minus 9 is minus 54. Now you have to write minus 54 so that the, the sum of the product, sorry, sum of the numbers in the product is plus 25. Since, it is, since the product is minus, one of the numbers should be minus. And the sum is positive, the larger number should be positive. Like you have to write it like this, 54 times minus 1. But that may not work. Then go for the second one, 27 minus, I'll do other way around. Huh? Minus 1 times 54, then increase this, minus 2 to 27. Now that, that will work. Hmm? So. Minus 2x, huh? you take this as minus 2x. This next number is minus 2x. It is like this. Minus 2x is sitting adjacent to 6x squared. Once you pull out 2x, what will you get? 3x minus 1. You write 3x minus 1. The other factor, since you need 6x squared, you have to, which expression you, should you put there? 6 times what? 2. 2x. Here you need minus 9. This number is minus 1. So what do you need here? Minus times plus will give you minus. 1 times 9 will give you 9. 
That's it. Hmm? But you have to figure out one number here. Right? If you don't straight away get the factors, you can do it like that. Hmm? Try the. But make sure that uh, you get the correct combination there. And uh, take one of them and get the common, uh, pull out the common factor and get what you need. So write the first factor like this. Then you can get the other one just by comparing it with what you have in the upstairs. Right.
Most of you did great. Huh? I mean, you, most of you came up with the correct answer, except this one. Anyway, I'll do the third before getting into the fourth one. Again, you can see that if, when you, if you want to factor a trinomial, you multiply these two. You get 60 plus 60 here. And you need to write it as a product of two so that uh, the sum will add up to minus 68. So both should be negative, like minus 1 times minus 60. But it doesn't work. 2 times 30 doesn't work. 3 times 20 doesn't work. 4 times 15 doesn't work, but we'll write it. So you get minus 19, very close. Then definitely the next one will hit. Right? So minus 5 times 12, no, 17. So next one. Minus 6 times minus 10. Yeah, this just closed calls, huh? This minus 19, minus 17, minus 16. So minus 6 times minus 10. So minus, if you take minus 6, you assume that minus 6 is sitting adjacent to 6x squared. So when you pull out x, x is the maximum you can pull out, you get 5x minus 6. So the first factor should be 5x minus 6. Again, with 5x squared, you write minus 6x, because you break this into two parts, minus 6x minus 10x. When you keep them together, you can pull out x, leaving 5x minus 6 as the factor. So next one can be obtained straight away. You need 5x squared here. So you need an x. Here you need 12. So six minus 6 times this number should be plus 12. So it should be minus 2. Hmm? Fourth. Fourth, most of you made mistakes. Because you know, as I told you, the cardinal rule, if you want to like factor something, look for the common factors. Here you have a common factor. Three, right? You, you have, I mean, even after you factoring, like, sorry, after factoring, you could have pulled that factor out, but still nobody has done it. Only two or three of you got the answer, correct answer. I mean, from what I have looked, what I have watched, I mean, I mean, what I have corrected. Hmm? Uh, three, uh, yeah, three of you got the correct answer. Like, you first pull out the common factor. Three is common. So you get x squared minus 9x plus 14. I mean, you don't need the shortcut methods to factor this one. You can straight away do it. Because this is 2 times 7. 2 plus 7 add up to I mean, minus 2 minus 7. will add up to uh, minus 9. It, you can straight away do it. x minus 2, x minus 7. Hmm? But you haven't pulled that 3 out. Uh, what's the fifth one? But your answers are good, huh? I mean, overall, they are good. Five. I mean, it's, it's easy for us. When you are, I mean, doing these things well, when we get into our actual syllabus, uh, you don't find it anything difficult. I mean, all of you can, I mean, for sure, not most of you. In fact, all of you can do those problems without any difficulty. Hmm. Uh, okay, we'll uh, go for the fifth one. You can, you can see it. I mean, you don't try to wait so long. Probably in four weeks, five weeks, probably. Uh, for sure, by the end of uh, August, you should be able to do past five problems without any difficulty. I mean, you take them, do it. I mean, they are so simple. Once you have a proper background and once you understand uh, the basic concepts of that chapter, you should be able to do them without any problem. You, this, at this level, your answers are really good. They are not very difficult problems, on the other hand. But in fact, a problems are also not difficult. The problem is it's very hefty. The syllabus is like 1,800 hours. Uh, for maths, 600. Physics, 600. Chemistry, 600. Hmm? Like, you know, the cream is cream of the country is in the university. But in the university, they, uh, when they go for an exam, usually they prepare for 180 hours at most. 180 hours or 200 hours. So you, you are doing 1,800 hours. 
nearly nine times more than that. So that's a little hefty, but you can handle it in this way. Uh, like say, uh, when you cover, say for example, few chapters in math, say four chapters in physics, say three, chemistry, say five. When you are here, at least you should be able to do like exam level problems in these sections. You should prepare like that. Then you don't have any difficulty towards the end because you know you are well prepared for these things. Like say you get a certain problem from these two sections in a paper. So you should be able to do that without any difficulty when you are at this level. Not soon after the, that, that part is covered, but at least after three months you should be and go through that and understand when and then do the past pair problems and make sure that you know everything. Prepare like that. Then uh, you don't have any difficulty towards the end. Because towards the end, if you wait till the last minute, it's a little hard to do it. During our time, we, we, we could do it. Like, you know, we, ha we, we can skip a lot of parts. Still, uh, we'll be in a good shape because, you know, uh, like say we had 10 questions in PO, we have to answer seven, so we can prepare for five, half of the syllabus. With five, probably you can barely get a, you can get a B. B is a very good result those days. Usually, uh, uh, you know, candy the best results in our year it was uh, A, B, double C. I think A for physics, B, and two Cs. Uh, usually with uh, like one B, three S's, you can uh, go to the Faculty of Engineering without any problem. <laughs> Those risks are also very low. One is that uh, papers are difficult. The other thing is people don't study much. Even though you study, it's difficult to do those problems. I mean, you need real IQ to do them because the problems are very difficult. Uh, now it's, it's different. You can do the problems, but everybody is doing well. Therefore, the competition is very high. <laughs> now you can do this game. You can play the game like this now. Like you get seven questions, you have to answer five. You now if you prepare for three and go to the exam, you will get, get you, had, you can get an S, but with this you cannot do anything. You cannot even uh, go for some applied science faculty, or you cannot even get selected to some uh, universities, you know, some small universities are there, I shouldn't mention them because uh, they video it. So, so there are some universities other than the main, main universities. Even you cannot get into those with this performance. At least you have to do three and a half. Then it's like 70, 65. Hmm? That, because everybody is working hard and you are facilitated much. Because those days we didn't have paper classes. We, didn't, we uh, don't know, I mean, we haven't seen the past papers. There was some past paper, there was some one past paper book, but uh, with a lot of errors, if you try to do them, you can, I mean, you can do any of those problems because if you try to do them, because of the mistakes, printing mistakes, you cannot get the answer. Because there are some mistakes. With that, you cannot do the problems. So people don't try that. Uh, now it's different. Hmm? Uh, now, okay, but, but the competition is high. Because of that, uh, you cannot do that game. You have to at least cover 90% of the syllabus, and you should be really fluent in those. Okay. Now take, uh, okay, I'll do, I'll, I did the fourth, right? I'll do the fifth. But you, most of you got it. Except the fourth one, you got it correct, huh? this eight. Now, uh, you know, if you multiply these two, you get 96 but it is minus 96. So that means when you write it as a product, one number should be negative, one, num one number should be positive. Hmm? So you can take one times 96, uh, and you know their sum should be minus, therefore larger sum, sorry, larger, larger number should be negative. So this doesn't work. Two times 48, no, both are, odd, sorry, both are even, so it doesn't go for this one. Yeah, you can skip some of them. Huh? Look, you can write two times, three times, four times, six times, two times 48, both are even. Two even numbers don't, get, don't give you an odd number. So this is the only thing you should try. 
3 times 32. So take 3. Assume in that 3 is adjacent, sitting adjacent to this, like this. So when you pull out 3x, you can pull out all 3x, you get 4x plus 1. So to get 12x squared, you need 3x. To get minus 8, you get minus 8 here. Because 1 times minus 8 is minus 8. So I did four of them. So I'll do, uh, I'll try the answer for the sixth, seventh, and eighth. I can barely see the problem. This is the answer to the sixth. Uh, Eight. These are the answers to the sixth, seventh, and eighth. But most of you got the answers correct, yeah? It's good. Now we'll move to the next one. Expansions. But these are very simple ones. But you need only, uh, I mean, you need to do these things correctly. That would be sufficient. I mean, I can do very difficult problems, but uh, it's no use. I mean, uh, then what happens is some people, at least, uh, who need to be helped will be discouraged if I do it like that. Say, for example, the level of the people are like this, like, like you know, these are the top people. I mean, there are no, I don't classify people. I'm just giving you an example. No? So I need, to, I need these guys to be somewhere here. Say this is the minimum level we need. If I, I can do very difficult problems and I can do short, I can show you uh, like shortcut methods a lot. But if I do it, these guys probably will go up a little bit, leaving them at, their, at the, these places intact. So what happens is, if, if, if I do it like that, when I start the lesson, because of them, I have to do the problems again and again. I mean, so it takes, it, it wastes uh, time of everybody because you know everybody's time. Because uh, if I if we do it in if we, if we can, if we can do it a problem like uh, uh, within ten minutes if we, if we, if we can do it do a problem within ten minutes we may spend nearly thirty minutes to do the same problem because I have to do it again. So uh, it's a waste. So this way is better. It, it's kind of an investment. So we'll uh, start the third chapter. Expansions, but it's so simple. However, uh, people sometimes make mistakes here. So I don't want you to do that. Like for example, sometimes very rarely, uh, I don't think you are in this level, but people expand it like this, x squared plus four. Is, this, is that correct? No. Why not? Because you have missed a term here, like 2ab term. Hmm. OK. So 4. Oh, sorry, 3. Here we go through a new, I mean, something that you haven't seen earlier. Probably you have seen the trinomial expansion. Probably you haven't seen it. But we have a chapter, namely binomial expansion towards the end. There you can, like, once we cover that, you can expand probably x plus 1 to the power 20, 
2x plus uh, 2x plus 5 to the power 15 without any difficulty. But uh, for the time being, we don't want to go into that level. But we just want to brush up the things that we have learnt in our O levels. Hmm? Uh, first, let's take this. You see, very simple, no? A plus B squared. Uh, it is, I mean, you can write it like this. Uh, then you can expand it like A squared. A, B, B, A, again it is A, B, finally you get B squared. With this you get A squared plus 2 A, B, because they are similar terms, plus B squared. This is something probably you have learnt in your grade 8, grade 9. Uh, can you ex uh, explain this geometrically? Can you do it? How do you verify this expansion geometrically? No, okay. We'll see. Uh, first, I'll go through the next one and then I'll uh, uh, show you how it is explained geometrically. Now, in this case, it's very simple stuff, huh? but I have to go through this. In particular, in the syllabus, it was given like that. We have to go through these things. Hmm? But uh, since your level is good, this may not be very necessary to you guys. I mean, you guys are really good. I mean, compared to the, the answers usually I see, your level is much better. But still, I, I mean, I'm supposed to go through this one, huh? since it is in the syllabus. So A squared minus AB, then you get another minus AB term. Finally, minus times minus C plus B squared. Again, you can add up to the terms sitting in the middle. So you get A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. The only difference is that here, when all of them are positive, all the terms here are positive. But here, the signs alternate, here also the signs alternate, plus, minus, plus, like left, right, left, like, hmm? plus, minus, plus. So uh, I, now I'll show you, uh, I'll try to interpret this geometrically. Of, uh, I would say a plus b squared. Hmm? Okay, we'll draw a square. It should at least look like uh, right. it looks like a square. Now uh, you take this as a, this length as a. This length as B. It's a square. So this side, this length is A. This is B. So this side, the length is A plus B. This also, the, this also A plus B. Therefore, what is the area? Like, say, this 4 times 4, then you get 16. Likewise, here, um, both sides are equal. So the area is A plus B quantity squared. Hmm. Now I break this into four parts. Oh, sorry. Hmm. What is the area of this square? Length is A. So this is A squared. What is the area of this? Length is B and it's a square. So this B squared. So if somebody writes uh, A plus B quantity squared as A squared plus B squared, he or she is ignoring these two parts. What is the area of this? It's a rectangle. 
breadth is B, height is A. So it is AB. What is the area of this? AB, the same. So that's why you get A squared plus B squared times 2AB. Hmm? Right. Uh, now we'll do some examples. Oh, we can. Uh, no, we'll do some examples. Later we'll go through the cube, A plus B cube. You can do them in one line, no? they are not very difficult ones. We can do just eight problems just for the sake of completeness. I do just one of them. Now here, you have two x minus three quantity cube, sorry, quantity squared. So it is like a squared plus two ab plus b squared. So first you need to square this. When you square something like this, it's a product. Therefore, you have to square each term. Hmm? So the square of this is 4x squared. The square of this, forget about this minus sign, square is 9, it's plus. Then you get a 2ab, you get 2ab term. So you have to multiply everything. First, with numbers, you, you get 2 times 3 times 2, 12. But the sign in the middle is minus, minus 12, there's a, vari there's a variable x. Should I do the second? Ah, sorry, I wrote a wrong answer, wrong problem. Huh? This plus. When it is plus, this also plus. Everything is positive. But here you get the signs alternated. Huh? Now square this. You can write this as 6x quantity squared, but in A levels you don't have to do it. You can straight away write it. It is 36x squared. Now 2a beta, it is minus, you have a minus sign, 2 times 7 times 6. So 2 times 6 is 12 times 7, 84x. Then the square of this, 49.
through the cube. Not cube, oh yeah, A, A plus B cube. After this, we have to go through uh, simultaneous equations and then little bit of polynomials, probably might take two more days. Then we can start the usual lesson, ALO lesson uh, functions, hmm? probably in couple of, after a couple of days, hopefully, one, two, three, in the third day from today, I mean third, third, day, third, third class day from today, probably we can start the lesson. Since you guys, you guys are doing, doing good, I think I can start it a little earlier. But still, we have to do some uh, si simplifications and a little bit of algebra. But you guys are doing well. Now, part C. Recall that we have obtained these two, A plus B quantity squared. Overall, the answers are good, but uh, I saw, still I saw some mistakes. We say are mistakes, huh? but really I saw some mistakes. That's why we need to do this, right? Even though they are very simple. Okay, now starting from this, we can uh, come up with, uh, with expressions for A plus B quantity cube as well as A minus B quantity cube. Now when it comes to this, you can, ex you can write this as ex uh, A plus B quantity squared times, I, I would go the other way, A plus B squared. So the, po the powers add up to three. Hmm? Now you know what A plus B quantity squared is. You can plug them in. The, you can replace this guy by the expansion. Now we can expand. Hmm? So you have a, a cube, then product of these two. So here two times A squared times B. Then you have A times B squared. Then let's multiply this by B. So B A squared means A squared B. Then you have two A B squared. You can write it beneath this one. Finally, you get B cubed. Now you can add similar terms because similar terms are one below the other. So you can write this as 3a squared b, here 3ab squared plus b cubed. Uh, I can exp expand the other one using this, but I'll write the answer straight away. Similarly, a minus b quantity cube is equal to a cube. You get the same terms, I mean. All this in the same order, but the only difference is here signs alternate. In this expansion also, the signs alternate. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Hmm? Now we'll come up with the pattern. Have you seen Pascal triangle? No. Yes or no? Pascal triangle. 
probably some of you have seen it. Huh? Okay, we'll go through, we'll see what Pascal triangle is. Then we can expand this in two different ways. You can uh, stick to one, the shortest method though, the, the method uh, with which you are mostly comfortable. Uh, let's uh, first see what Pascal triangle is. So, sorry, first let's go with zero with the zero power. A plus B raised to its zero power is what? One. So I write it here. One. Then A plus B to the power one, which is A plus B. I'll write it like this. A. The sign comes right below this one. A plus B. I keep the symmetry. Hmm? Then A plus B quantity squared. Then you know what it is. You start with A squared plus plus sign just sitting below this. You have two A B plus B squared. Then the next A plus B quantity cube. It is this. You can see that the powers of A will go down. A cube, A squared, A, A to the power 0. And powers of B comes in the other way around. B cube, B squared, B. Hmm. And the numbers are 1, 3, 3, 1. So it is like this. A cube plus 3A squared, B plus 3AB squared plus B cube. Now look at the numbers sitting there. Hmm? The numbers, only the numbers. Remove all uh, A's and B's. The numbers are, you get one, one, one. Then here you have one, two, one. Finally you have one, three, three, one. Hmm? Pascal came up with this idea. I mean, you could have done the same thing if he hasn't done it, but he, he, has, he had done it some, at some time ago. So we cannot, if you do it, it's not original. So this, this Pascal this is called the Pascal triangle. It has a simple idea, you know. If you get two numbers in the previous uh, row, you can find the number in the next row like this. You add them up and write the number here, look. 0 plus 1, this 0 means nothing. Nothing plus 1 is 1. 1 plus nothing, 1. Here, nothing plus 1, 1. 1 plus 1, 2. 1 plus 0, 1. Here, nothing plus 1, 1. 1 plus 2, 3. 2 plus 1, 3. 1 plus nothing, 1. So what is the next line? If you want to predict the next line, what it, what it will be? What will it be? This one, this is four, this is six, four, three plus one is four, this is one. Hmm? Uh, the, always this, the first number is one. These are the natural numbers, like one, two, three, four. These are triangular numbers, one, three, six, next time you get 10, 15, 21, like that. Those are the triangular numbers. Uh, there are like infinite number of patterns in this triangle. Uh, now, you can use this triangle to expand uh, like cubes, even squares, even fourth power. Uh, but we'll stick to only the cube. I forgot to write three here. Uh, we'll see how it is done. Hmm? There are two ways of doing this. Hmm? Let's see how uh, it is expanded. I just take two of them first, huh? two x minus three quantity cube. Mm -hmm. 
One. Uh, okay. There are two ways of doing this. Hmm? Either you can use the Pascal triangle, or you can use some other method. I'll show you how it is done. Okay, this is how you do it. If you use Pascal triangle, the numbers are, look, 1, 3, 3, 1. Hmm? Comes out of blue, like you get those numbers from somewhere. But forget about the, okay, those. What about the others? You start with A cube, but the power of A will go down when you move this way. A, a cube, A squared, A, A is not there. But B goes in the other way around. B cube, B squared, B, and there's no B in the first term. Okay, so we can do it in that way. 2x, first you have 2x cube. Hmm? That is A. Then you have 2x squared. Then you have 2x. Finally, there's nothing in the last term. You start with 3. Forget about the minus sign. No? You have 3 cubed. Here you have 3 squared. Here you have 3. Now, there are some numbers coming from this Pascal triangle. First term, there's 1. But if you introduce 1, there's I mean, nothing will be changed. Because if you multiply something by 1, you get the same answer. But you need to introduce these two numbers in the middle terms. 3, this from the from the Pascal triangle. This 3 is also from the Pascal triangle. Now, this 2x, this 2x minus 3. Therefore, the signs should alternate. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Now, you know how to find the cube. Uh, 8, 2 cube is 8, x cube. You have to uh, raise both, I mean, in the product, you have to raise both numbers to their cubes. This 3 times 3, 9. This is 4x squared. 4x squared, right? So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3, 36. Sorry, 9 times 4. 3 times 3 is 9 times 4, 36x squared. Here, 2 squared is 9 times 3, 27 times 2, 54x minus 27. In the same fashion, you can expand the second. Since I don't have enough space, I'll do it here. Uh, first, trace this to the third power. When you move this way, the powers will diminish each time by 1. Hmm? Next time, you don't have to write anything. Now, start with 1. 1 cube is 1. You can just write 1. Here also 1 squared, 1 to the power 1, all are 1. Now introduce that, uh, those numbers from the Pascal triangle, 3, 3, in the middle. This plus, therefore everything is plus. Now trace the numbers in the product into their third power. So 4 to the power 3 is 64, x cubed. Here you have 16 x squared, but you need to multiply it by 3. So you get 48 x squared. This is 4 times 3, 12. x plus 1. Now I'll use the second method. Second method is this. Hmm? Forget about the Pascal triangle, but we are using that uh, in a different way, indirectly. Now look, if you have a plus b quantity cube here, First one is A cube. You write A cube. Last one is, rightmost term is B cube. You don't have any problem with those. But what about the terms in the middle? Like, can you do it in the way that we did with the squares? Like 2AB. Because you know, in this case, in the middle terms, you have 3. So you have 3 here. And unfortunately, here, the term is not 3AB. 3 squared AB. Therefore, you have to consider this term twice. Like this one, like this term, this one twice. And this one once, like 3, this term twice, once. In the last, in the third term here, 3 is still there. A times B squared. Now, that time, you have to count this twice. Like this. You have to count this twice. 1, 1, three times, A times, B, B. 
first one a cube, last one is b cube. You don't have any problem with that. The second term is three times a times a times b. Next term, three times a times b times b, like three b. Next term, three a b b. So we'll do it that way, so that you can do it in one line. But if you are accustomed to some other method that you are comfortable with, you do it in that way. But as far as you can get the answer correctly. So, okay, I'll do it now. First, the cube was this. Uh, we can wind up with this. Huh? I mean, we'll do some problems, few problems, and then we can wind up. Uh, 2x cube, quantity cube, 8x cube. You have the, the answer here, that's a problem. Come on, 8x cube. Now, forget about the sign of the next term, or you can introduce the signs, plus minus, plus minus. Hmm? Last term, the fourth term is 3 cube, 27. The only problem is the terms in, with the terms in the middle. So as I told you, three times, this one twice, once. So let's multiply the numbers first. Three times, two times, two times, three. So three times, two times, two. Three times, two times, two is 12. Three times two is six, another two, 12, times three, 36. But here, look, x is counted twice. So x squared. Now next time, uh, numbers again. Three times, two times, three times, three. This counted twice. Hmm? Okay, let's go this way. Three times, three times, three times, two. So three is counted thrice, three times. So 27 times two, 54. X is counted only once. Okay. Again, this one. Uh, the, you first trace this to its third power. 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4, 16. Times 4, 64. X cubed. Here, all the terms are positive because the sign in between is positive. So these are positive. Finally, you get 1 cubed as 1. Now, the terms in the middle, 3 times, you count this twice. 3 times 4, 4, 1. 3 times, 4 times, 4 times, 1. Forget about 1. 3 times, 4 times, 4. At least you know what 4 times 4 is. 16 times 3. Hmm? 48. But this is counted twice, huh? 3 times this way. So x squared. Next time, 3 times, 4x times, 1, 1. When you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change anything. 3 times, 4x times, 1 times 1. So it is 3 times 4x, 12x. That way, right? That's the second method. You can do it one line if you are really good at those numbers, right? You take that down, then I'll give you some examples. And we can wind up with these examples, right? I mean.
Okay. <coughs> you expand them, either using Pascal, tri Pascal triangle or the straightforward method, it doesn't matter. But uh, when you exceed the third power, you have to go for the Pascal triangle. But at this level, possibly with, even without using the Pascal triangle, you can get the correct answer. Okay, try these eight problems. If you want, I just do <coughs> one of them. In a like cube, there are four terms in the expansion. In a square, there are, there are three terms. So here, you know, first you have to get the cube of this. So 64, like four x quantity cube. So raise each to its cube. So four cube is 64 x cube. Since this is positive, all the terms are positive, there should be four terms. The last term is 3 cube, which is, which is 27. Then the terms, two terms in the middle, will, uh, can be obtained like this, three times, take this twice, and then this once, like 3, like this, 3, 4x, 4x, 3. So when it comes to numbers, we have 3, 4, 4, 3, 3, 4, 4, 3. Like 3, 4 is 12. Another 4, 3 will give you another 12. So 12 times 12, 144. But x is counted twice. So you get x squared. Then the th next term, you get 3 times 4x times 3, 3. So 3 times 3, 3, then 4x. So 3 cube times 4x. Easy. You have 3 cube here. You multiply this by 4. 25 times 4 is 100, 2 times 4 is 8, so 108. X is counted only once. Or if you use Pascal triangle, again, it doesn't matter, you get the correct answer. Even though you spend two lines, that's okay. You don't have to get the answer in one line. But somehow, you need to get the correct answer.
Uh, apart from little errors, you know, you have almost everybody got the correct answer. Hmm? Uh, now, let me put down the correct answers anyway. 6x plus 1 quantity cube. Here first you have, you have to raise this to its cube. Then you get 3, count this twice, and then 1. You get 108x squared. Next time you get 18x. One, three, x plus two, uh, quantity cube. Fourth, so for the first time you get a uh, expansion with a negative sign. So the signs should alternate, and this is what you get. And the fifth, which is 2x minus 1 to the power cube. Again, you have a minus sign in front. You have to uh, raise it to its cube. I mean, I don't have to explain much, because almost everybody uh, got the correct answers. Here, minus 12x squared plus 6x minus 1. 6. Here you get uh, 125 x cube. Again, the signs should alternate. Next one, 150 x squared. Then you get 60 x minus 8. How do you get the terms in the middle like that? Because three times, you count this twice and once. When you count this twice, you get 25 times 2 times 3. So it is 25 times 6, 150. Next time, here, you get 3, count this twice, so 12, 3 times 4, 12 times 5, 60. X is counted only once. So 7, 3x minus 2 quantity cube. You get 27x squared. Again, the sign in the middle is negative. Finally, the eighth. Five x plus one quantity cube. So here, you know, the sign is positive. So every term should be positive. Uh, you get this as the answer. The terms in the middle can be obtained like this. Three times, five times, five. Count this twice, times one. So three times, five times, five. Five times five, five times five is 25 times three. 75. And x is counted twice. Next time, three times, you count this twice. It doesn't have any impact because it is 1. So 3 times 5x, 15x. Hmm. Mm. Uh, you have got it uh, right. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't got it right, please uh, make the corrections. Some of you may have made little mistakes. Uh, with negative signs and, you know, sometimes I saw you saw some, some answers like uh, these numbers were not traced to the third power. There's only one, one, one mistake, one such mistake. Uh, other than that, I think uh, the answers are reasonably good, very good. Uh, for the homework, you, 
you do problem no, uh, problem number four, part A to part R, there are 20 parts, I guess. Do the first 18 parts, and then uh, problem number six. They are not really difficult ones, sir. You can do them. And probably we have to spend on this at least for two weeks. Like we have to go through uh, simultaneous equations and then, uh, and we have to do one more. One, one topic was left out. It was uh, trinomial expansions. We need to go through that. And then we can start uh, simultaneous equations. Uh, I mean, we need to go through a little bit of polynomials, you know, how to make substitutions and stuff like that. Then we can start the lesson. Probably in three weeks, we can start the lesson functions. Okay. So I'll see you next week. <laughs>